Hello, Angie Gerber here, and welcome to my podcast, Awareness. Once you know, you can't unknow. A place you can come to start thinking and shifting your thoughts to finally create the results you truly, truly desire. It'll shift your mindset and give you strategies to get out there and get it done. Let's get started. So today I want to talk about relationships and various relationships that we probably find ourselves in. And I just, I heard something this week, and it was so interesting that by the time we're 25, many of our conversations throughout the day that we once had maybe with our family members, parents or siblings, that starts to shorten. So instead of a couple hours a day, it might be 15 minutes, if at all. You know, some people will go from days to weeks to months to holidays when they see or speak with their relatives. Uh, And then it went on to say that once you're 30, about 30 and after, same thing happens with your friends. Whereas you'll not talk as often, you won't see each other as much, and um, life just gets in the way, or whatever you say to, you know, make it make sense to you. And then uh, it's interesting because your family and your friends that d- that goes down, and relationships can sometimes deteriorate. Other times you can have that friend that it's been 10 years maybe that you've seen each other and you can pick up just as you left off, like not a day has passed in time. And then what becomes really relevant in our lives would be our partner, our spouse, significant other, uh, that becomes a majority of our time. And then obviously, if we start families, our kids, And the one that snuck up on me, um, that kind of I got an aha on, was your coworkers. So it's who you work with. And if you think about that, I know that we hear it, you know, you spend the most time at work, if you work a nine to five job, especially, and the coworkers that you have and the people you surround yourself with, they are a lot of your life. And we, a lot of times, don't pick them. So think about that. And if that happens to be your situation and your circumstances, who are those people? Because we become the sum of the people that we hang around the most. So look at the coworkers you have in your life are the people that you're partnering with in your business. And really, really look at that and think to yourself, is this who I would choose? And just if it isn't, and if they're negative, or if they don't like the company, or talk about other people behind their back, or they're just always looking for what's wrong versus looking for what's right, just be aware and separate as much as you can or shield. (laughs) And by that, I mean cancel, stop, just don't let those negative Thoughts and feelings and emotions seep in because they will if you don't protect yourself and your thoughts in your mind. And it can sneak up on you so very quick. You can have these relationships and you can really, really appreciate them and like the people and want to be around them. And they're just potentially negative. And I heard that. And I was just like, Oh, that's so interesting. And then this whole chart, it continued to go up and one line continued to go up with who you spend the most time with. And it was interesting, because at the end of the chart, the one that you spend the most time with each and every day is yourself. So I challenge you to also think about that. And what are you doing today for yourself? What self-care are you doing? Or are you so busy taking care of everyone else? Are you busy all day long being busy and doing things that really, really won't matter tomorrow? 
I mean, think about it. Think about the big picture versus just today and the small picture. The things that you have to do, you should do, you need to do, are those things that matter. You know, and growing up, and again, once you get, you know, I'm in my 40s, I'm closer to 50 than I am 40. And once you get there, you look back and in the moment, some of these relationships and some of these maybe situations or arguments or things you had to stand up for, they seemed so important and they seemed so like this was do or die. It had to be this way. And it almost maybe felt like the the world could come to an end. And retrospect, did it even matter? You know, think about some of the things that we'll just stand our ground on until we lose a relationship over it. Or, you know, it's just we're going to die up on that hill. (laughs) Regardless, is it worth it? Does it matter? It Things change. Beliefs change. Situations change. The people that come and go in your life change. And at one time, I didn't think that was ever even possible. And I'm here to tell you it is. These people that you think are going to be there always and forever, they're not for the very, very most part. It's just not how it is. So yes, enjoy the moment. Be grateful and happy um, for what you have now and and where you're at and who you're with, uh, friendship-wise, you know, all of that. But also, when something comes up, and it's so stressful, or it's so just heavy, and it's, it's not good, and it's a fight, or it's an argument, or it's something, just really think short term, long term, small picture, big picture. Is it going to matter? I think there's so much unnecessary and unneeded, you know, stress and anxiety and worry that is, we pet, we just create in ourselves. And it doesn't have to be that way. But we're so in the thick of it. And we have these blinders on where we just can't see outside of ourselves or outside of the situation or outside of the argument are outside of, you know, what we believe to be true, that we just get so engulfed in it, and it just becomes all consuming. And that's where a lot of undue stress and anger, resentment, frustration, suppression, which creates anxiety, which creates dis-ease, which creates a disease. You know, it's it's interesting if you hyphenate disease, it's disease and it's the body that's not at ease. So really start thinking about what you can be doing to take care of yourself. Because as the chart chart showed, at the end of the time, you're going to be alone with yourself the most. And that's where when kids leave, you have the empty nest syndrome, or when a spouse retires, people don't know what to do with their relationships, or they don't know what to do because they have become so much to someone else and focus so much on showing up and taking care of kids or our significant others or partners or businesses or their jobs, and they just throw themselves completely into it. And then when big life events happened, it's a wake up call because they, they have no idea what to do or who they are without this. Uh, and it, I've just seen so many people and it's happened to people that I know and I'm really close to where all of a sudden, um, what do they do? <laughs> where do you go from here? And it's because they don't know how to be alone. And they have always taken care of other people. Um, What do you love to do? What do you like to do? Think about that and really start making time for that and for yourself. And, And pour into yourself and realize that you are who you are. 
and accept that for what it is and find things that you can do to enhance yourself, to work on yourself. I know I've talking, talked about the 1% better every day. So not only 1% better, what can you do to give back to yourself 1% every day? Even if it's, you know, painting your nails or, you know, stopping for that treat that you want for yourself or going for a drive alone or a walk alone or journaling. Maybe you want to watch, you know, a mindless TV show just to, to unplug and relax or calling that friend that you have lost touch with. That's been, it's been a while and reconnecting with people. I think so much connection has been lost, especially over these last few years. And it's just kind of now we've accepted it that it's, oh, it's just the way it is, or it's, you know, it's the new norm. And it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be the new norm, nor should it be the new norm. Reach out to people that have been on your mind. And really stop and think about how you can, you know, reconnect with yourself and with others. I, uh, I, th- I think it's so important to just check in on people and ask them how they are. You know, what's new? Uh, if there's someone, you know, even if it's from work that you know is having a hard time or, you know, <laughs> I would say online or on Facebook, but we all know that we only see the usually for the most part. of what's online, probably more than that, is the top 10% of someone's life. Very, very rarely do I see the the yuck and the ick and the hard stuff. Sometimes it's shared and sometimes it's shared in a way that's really uncomfortable for the people (laughs) that are reading it. Um, You know, because I don't know that the intention to which it's shared is for the right reasons. Um, so I would, I would say, you know, don't go to social media necessarily to find out who needs, you know, for the most part to be connected with, uh, but follow your intuition, follow those hits of those people that pop into your mind or that you just kind of have been thinking about. And 1% better, you know, 1% better every day, uh, protect your thoughts, watch your environment, who are you around? What are they saying to you? You know, what are what are you letting come in through your thoughts into your subconscious mind? That's now going to have you take action or not take action, therefore get results or not get results. Uh, as I've said, it's it's just so very important. And I know um, it was funny. And I, I just wanted to share this quick story. So I've been listening to Alex Hermosi and his wife, Layla Hermosi on YouTube. I just think he's his story and her story. Um, it's brilliant. I love listening, listening to them. It's, it's, again, shifting my perspective, and what I usually listen to, or who I usually follow, or what I what I'm interested in. Um, it's just different for me. And so I was listening, listening to the empire that they've built and what they've done. And I think why I appreciate it is because he's just, he's so honest. And yet, um, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's a good word about how he's I think he's now doing 200 million a year and his story about how he built and lost it all built and lost it and he just kept persevering and working through it and um, his honesty about his journey and now he's sharing with anyone and everyone that wants to understand uh, business you know and um He's selling his books for 99 cents just because he wants to make it affordable to everyone. And he's really, um, like I just talked to one of my business partners about, you know, you show up and you, you give to give, not give to get. And I think so many people are, are giving to get. What can I get? What's in it for me? What will, what will come of this? And it's really important to to give, to give and give 
and give and give, as Alex would say. He's like, someone said, when do you, when do you ask? When do you ask for the business or ask them to invest, you know, or ask them or sell them your product? He goes, you give until they ask. You give until they ask. And it's just such an interesting perspective. And I can see as he's come through his journey and as he's had the success, how he's expanded as a person and she's expanded in their minds and how they think and who they surround themselves and knowing their environment has to change. It's just, it's pretty cool, cool to watch and uh, refreshing <laughs> to, to hear that. Um, but I was listening to them this morning um, on a podcast that they're interviewed in. And my daughter, my 11 year old walked in and she goes, oh, mom, not to, you know, not to be mean, but her voice, it sounds like, I think she said a man or a gay man or something, uh, Layla, his wife. And I said that that's really interesting you were to say that. And it was the perfect opportunity because Layla Hormozy had done a video on YouTube about that about that very, very thing. She's like, you, and they swear a lot. It's really, really funny. Um, I know kids listen to this with their, their parents, so I won't right now. But um, she's just like, you know, it's just so beeping, frustrating, and this and that. She's like, because I'm here, I've built this amazing company. I show up at a high level, I give back, I hire amazing people, I'm surrounded by just fant you know, just everything you think that what I have to say matters and what I have to say people would want to listen to because of my experience and because of what I bring to the table. But she said the most comments I get are about my voice. Oh, it sounds like she smokes a pack of cigarettes a day. She's probably on steroids. What is she, a transvestite? She sounds like a man. She's like, and it was really hurtful. Like, I was like, what the, you know, like, how about what I talked about? How about actually the content that I just delivered? Because there was value in what I had to say. Hello, I built a million dollar business in X amount of years by the time I was like, I think she was mid 20s. I mean, she's someone to listen to. And all, not all, most, she said, many, many, many of the comments she got were about her voice. And it was frustrating to her and upsetting. And I remember she went to Alex and I'm telling my 11 year old daughter this. And I said, you know, that's, that's funny you say that. Um, because there's a lot of people that have said the same thing to her. And so she went to Alex, her husband was just like, you know, she's like, I don't know what the to do. Like, really? She's like, I just show up, you know, I have all these things to say. And all I'm doing is getting this hate about your voice. It's so weird. It's so this like, what's wrong and all this stuff. And she goes, and he looked at me. And he said, was well, it true? And she's like, well, what, what do you mean? Is it true? You know, she's still pretty frustrated and upset and, you know, hurt and whatever, by all these negative mean comments. And he's just said, is it true? Do you have a weird voice? And she's just like, well, yeah, I've always had a weird, I mean, this is my voice. It's low, it's deep. I, I sound, you know, like a man and like I do smoke a lot and this and they're both health nuts. Um, so that's not the case at all, nor steroids or anything like that. But, and he's like, okay, so you have a you you have a weird voice. She's like, well, yeah. He goes, so what? And she's like, what? He's like, so what? So they're right. And she's like, yeah, I guess they are right. She's like, this is my voice, and this is what you get. And he's like, so then why does it bother you? She's like, huh. Well, he's like, wouldn't you have to agree with them that you have a weird voice? She's like, well, yeah. He's like, then what's the problem? <laughs> and she's like, and it's just getting little perspective shifts, just like that one, just like that one. Like, what does it matter? Yeah, they're right. So what? <laughs> so is, are you going to stop doing what you're doing? No. Then what does it matter? 
And she's like, and it was just getting that perspective, getting that little like wake up that, yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. It's not going to change what I post or what I don't or the content that I that I serve up. And and so I told I told my daughter that and she even requoted it to me like an hour later. I cannot remember what happened, but she's like, yeah, kind of like Alex said to Layla. And I'm like, exactly. So I just love that. I love even when I share stuff like that with my clients, with people, with my family, that there's just these little like, ah aha. So with that said, too, as that happens for you, or as you're watching something or consuming something, and you get an aha from it, or you get a lesson from it, pass it along. Like if Everyone did that once a day or even once a week with, you know, the intention of doing just that. That would be pretty cool. And it would be a lot different of a world, I believe, uh, versus having to spread all the rumors and all the nonsense and all the TikToks and all the crap that doesn't mean anything isn't going to go anywhere or do anything for anyone. That small picture and at the end of the day even won't matter, more or less a week or a month or a year. And um, that's kind of... That whole lesson is kind of what I had to do if I was going to start this podcast, if I was going to be on video. Uh, Zoom, I think, with, you know, COVID is what really got me pretty comfortable really quickly uh, being on camera. And I was the one in high school. This is back when we had answering machines. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's like a voicemail, but on a machine that you actually came home and press play and a tape recorder would play you the messages that people left you throughout the day. So you had to go home to retrieve your messages. And I wouldn't leave a message on anyone's answering machine because I detested my voice that much. I have never liked my voice, especially on recordings. Oh, I just did not like listening to it. And, um, you know, obviously wasn't ever like, oh, well, then let's just get right on camera. That sounds like a lot of fun. You know, I was the girl in the classroom. I definitely tried to avoid the front row. I uh, wouldn't raise my aunt, my hand to answer questions just in case I was wrong two plus two. I mean, I know it's four, but uh, just in case, you know, I cared so much what everyone thought and didn't want to look stupid or, you know, say the wrong thing. I mean, the world, whew, my world would have come to a crashing halt, you know, because then people would have had a reason to make fun of me more than maybe they already did or more than my voice or more than what I look like. So it's just interesting if you just get a different perspective on things. And realize that, you know, you're not always going to have the right answer. You're not always going to say the right thing. And yet, if you go about your day with the intention of making someone else's better, and what can you give versus what can you get, the universe will provide. Like the way will be shown, you will be rewarded. And I think where people get stuck in that is that it doesn't happen the way we think it should, or the way we um, picture it in our heads. You know, we have this whole, well, I'm going to do this, this and this, and then this person will hire me and that will happen and I'll get that raise and then that promotion and these things will happen because of all this stuff. Or if I say that to that person, then I think this will happen. And the thing is, is if you're doing anything to get, then it probably isn't going to happen. And if it does, it's definitely not going to happen. I don't think the way you intend it to, or if it even does, it won't last or, or be what you thought it was going to be or make it won't make you feel like you thought it was going to feel. So just know that um, when you do something and you give, 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 down that lane, down that road, you're going that way, the goodness might not come, that goodness might come from over here. 
It's not going to come from where you think, and you don't have any control over it, but it will be rewarded. It's a law of the universe. So give to give, not to expect, knowing that if you give for the right reasons, it will be returned. And in what form, when, from who or what, that's not up to you. And just appreciate and be grateful for the gifts. And when you do, when you are rewarded for your giving in whatever form it comes back, because we, we just won't know. And that's, that's the fun of the game too, is just giving. And because it raises your vibration, it makes you feel better. It makes you feel good. I know at least when I'm coaching or doing this, I mean, someone asked me the other day, they're like, what's really, what, what lights you up? And I said, it's being in the spirit of it. It's doing this. It's seeing the aha moments. It's having that moment like my dot with my daughter this morning where I got to make an impact. And I got to take something that she said, and she almost didn't even want to say, because she knows that, you know, that could be perceived as not a very nice thing or mean, but she's also free to talk to me openly. So she said it in a way that was trying not to be hurtful, but she wanted to, you know, say it. And then we were able to take it and turn it into, you know, I think a positive experience. And yeah, that's another thing. Let your kids be able to come and talk to you about whatever it is they need to, and be open to that, and don't crush it. And so another thing I heard this week that I just want to share, there's studies done, I think someone said it was in the 60s, I cannot remember who it was, it was just something that I heard, and I actually watched the video a couple times. They said that when they interviewed a group of five-year-olds, 98% of them with their creativity were on track to be genius, just geniuses because of their problem solving, their creativity. If you just gave them no constraints, no walls, they would just do the most amazing things. And then, you know, you get into the school system and you get in line and you do this and you do that. By the time Oh, I think there were 10. It was down to like 30% of them potentially had the the potential of a genius. And by the time they were 30, 98% of them were so far on the other side. There was maybe 2% of these kids that were considered potential genius. But they all started off exact opposite. 98% of them started off. And by the end, because of the environment, because of what they listened to, because of what they got told, how they fell in line, what people who always are showing up with the best intention to do the best they know how to do in that very moment with the information they have, um, shaped them and molded them. And I think people are just starting to hear that and understand that a little bit more. It's almost like I want to get my kids to the point where they're adults, they're functioning, they're doing very, very, you know, as good as they can with the tools and information resources they have and how I've helped them and teachers helped them and coaches helped them and all of that. It's like I want to do the men in black thing and be like, okay, besides just having your basic stay alive, like do what you need to do. Like, I want that wand where it just flashes their memory, because I want them to be able to go out and really do their own, find their own. And a lot of the the damage that we don't even realize we're doing is done. And it takes years to undo if it's ever undone at all. I mean, and I can say in my line of coaching and what I learned from Bob Proctor, it's really hard to undo a lot of that because you have to first learn all of this, then you have to unlearn it, and then you have to relearn something new. And 90 to 95% of people are just on autopilot every day. Their habitual behaviors and their paradigms are running the show. Because 95% of what we do every day 
is her- paradigms and habitual behavior. You know, in business, 5% strategy and 95% is mindset. And we have these companies that spend millions of millions of dollars on training and strategies and workshops and all this stuff. And, you know, all these people come in and, and all I'm like, it's just crazy. I can't even explain it. And then these people, they train all their people. And then they send their people off and just expect them to do it. And the people don't have the tools, resources, understanding, discipline, habitual behaviors that they need to perform and to do what is intended or what they were trained to do at the level that these companies want because they ignored the whole thing about why people know what they should do and don't do it. It's called the knowing doing gap. We know what we should be doing, but 90 to 95% of people aren't doing it. And why? And that's the process. And that's what I coach and help people through all the time, every time. So, you know, if you've enjoyed today's episode or any of them, please, please share them with a friend, send it off to someone. Uh, Again, I just do this because I want to show up and take all the information that I'm studying, that I'm reading, that I'm learning, that I know that I coach to and share it with more people. And I know that people listen from all over the world. And I'm so grateful for that. And I would love to get this into as many people's hands as I can. So if this has resonated with you, any part of it, and you know someone that could help, please, please feel free to share it. Until next time, have a good one. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And if you like what you heard, feel free to share, like, subscribe, follow, do whatever it is you do. I'd love to get this out to as many people as possible because it truly all does start with awareness. Once you know, you cannot unknow, and it changes everything. And of course, if I can help in any way, I'm here and happy to do so. Until next time, make it a good one.